Google's new releases, featuring YouTube and all kinds of new toys for marketers. Using mobile apps in marketing, five lessons for brands, and cool ideas of the week, including tips and ideas on Facebook PR, social media marketing, SEO, and email marketing. Hi, this is Rajiv Parikh, and this is the Marketing Best of the Week. What's new with Google? Three product and feature announcements. The first big announcement is YouTube's launch of paid subscription channels. It is significant because for the first time, there will be a segment of videos that are not free on YouTube. Except for Sesame Street, National Geographic, and the UFC, there are no big names necessarily in this announcement. There are currently 52 offerings from 30 providers of content from comedy to yoga to documentaries. However, this is likely to grow dramatically as there's greater adoption and with new self-service subscription tools. In fact, it's an amazing opportunity for a lot of content providers that have been dissatisfied with limited advertising revenue. For marketers, there will still be opportunities to advertise and have sponsorships on the channel. That's because those subscribers are going to be more valuable to marketers. Not only have they paid for the service, they're likely to come back, and you're likely to get more demographic and ethnographic information on them. With the potential for higher quality content, YouTube now becomes a more valuable place to market brands. The second announcement is Keyword Planner in AdWords. This replaces Google Keyword Tool and Traffic Estimator. Before, these were essentially general purpose keyword research tools that were useful for some things like SEO. However, there was a lot of cutting and pasting from one to the other to build your campaign. This announcement enables AdWords campaign building to be simpler and more powerful than ever before. You can brainstorm keywords by either putting keywords or phrases into the tool that describe your business. You can point it at a landing page, even a competitor one, or you can look through a pre-selected basket of keywords. You can filter these by CPC or cost per click, uh, estimated search volume, or if they're already in your account. You can save your keywords in a section called your plan, where you can store them for future use, which is helpful as you come up with new ideas and want to save them for later. Then once you have those keywords, you can multiply them using keyword multiplier, which essentially takes these words and mashes them up against parameters like product or competitive characteristics. You can even have them work against color. Once you do that, you can then run an estimate of cost versus volume. Now in the past, this wasn't particularly good, but this has improved over time. This is a much easier way to set up and manage AdWords, so check it out. The third and probably most quiet release are new filters for Google Analytics, including filters for mobile, data on brand names, models, whether a device has cellular radio or Wi-Fi, filters for social, including social networks, social action, social targets, and multiple currencies, which are great for e-commerce firms trying to understand how people are buying their product internationally. Overall, this is a great way to understand more about what devices people are using when they come to your site and how they're engaging with you. So check it out. Using mobile apps in marketing, five lessons for brands. The US consumer spends two hours and 38 minutes per day on smartphones and tablets. 80% of that time is spent on apps, the other 20% on the mobile web. So instead of mobile ads, maybe you ought to be thinking about mobile apps. Here are five types to consider with examples. First, product and service apps for convenience, like Kraft's iFood Assistant app that has recipes and the convenience of a built-in shopping list to make organizing much easier. Number two, apps that offer unique value, such as Kendall Jackson Wines, which uses QR codes on its labels to offer users different types of information like links to social sites, emails, and coupons, etc. Number three, apps that create social value. Social gifting app Gift lets users buy gift cards from hundreds of retailers and give them to friends and loved ones via the smartphone. Number four, offer incentives. It's a great way to differentiate your app from others. For example, Facebook retailers keep people using the app because they get deals while engaging with their friends. 
And number five, add entertainment to your app. The Hershey Park app not only allows you to learn about attractions, hours, and wait times, there are also small games within the app to keep you interested while standing in line. It's a great article, check it out. And now our segment, cool ideas of the week. First, Facebook PR. This is from Weintraub and Litwinka's book on social media community management. They have the 50, 30, and 20 rule. 50% of your posted Facebook content should be on non-competitive, third-party objective content. 30% should be highlighting your personality. Highlight interesting things about yourself to get engagement. 20% should be on business, but use tasteful self-promotional content. From the Social Marketing Tips article, there are 26 of them, here are four. Number one, offer subscriptions to your content and then tell people how large it is, more people will come. Number two, give credence to analytics. Once a week, make sure you take a look at the data about your content. Number three, map your content versus the projected customer journey. And number four, stick to one CTA or call to action per post. Make it simple, clear, and direct. From the SEO and social infographic, make sure you tweet about your content. Tweeting cuts Google indexation time by 50%, and it allows Google bots to find you much faster. It goes from hours to seconds. From the email and social media infographic, email is definitely alive and well. Three billion people use email versus one billion for Facebook and 200 million for Twitter and LinkedIn. Make sure you put social buttons in your emails. There's a 6.2% CTR with emails that have social sharing versus 2.4% without. Thank you for joining us this week. Hope you found this information to be really useful for you. Please subscribe to our channel so we can stay connected to you and look forward to seeing you next week.